This is Brandy Shampoo with Exploring Expression. And welcome, welcome, welcome to another Sunday at 7. Welcome to Sunday at 7 and welcome to December. This is month, the month of Christmas, the month of Hanukkah, the month of Kwanzaa, um, the last final, thank goodness, month of 2020, right? And welcome to it. And with that, welcome to Sunday at 7. I hope your week has been fantastic and productive. And I hope you have stepped each day towards your best expression. So I'm, I have a lot. I have a lot to cover today. So I'm going to jump right into it. Today is one of my favorite things to do. And that is um, a book roundup. So I am a self-proclaimed I'm a bibliophile. I love books. I love having books and seeing books and, and smelling books and reading books and everything there is to love about books. Um, in particular, I love adult books and nonfiction books, but I really love children's books. I have a particular passion for children's books, um, not just because I write children's books, but for reading also. I love to read children's books. And so what I have today, what I'm going to do today is a little bit different, a little bit different than some of the ones I've done before, but equally as valuable. I'm doing a children's book holiday roundup, a children's holiday book roundup, and just sharing, um, unlike what I do and check out this book, you know, and check out this book, I read the books, right? And starting in 2021, I'm going to have a check out this book review where I don't necessarily read the whole book, but I talk about what I like. But unlike those, oh, use my nose at you today. Unlike those, today, I'm just going to be showcasing some of my favorite holiday books, new and old. Are you ready? All right, let's get started. So, the very first one on my list, I can't talk about the holiday season without talking about Christmas. And I can't talk about Christmas without talking about the Bible. So my very first children's holiday book roundup pick has to be the Bible stories, right? And we have, we have several, probably too many, but you know, you know how I am. So we have several um, children's Bibles. The one I chose for today, I mean, and that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother checklist book is the brick Bible. You know how we feel about Legos and the, the um, Christmas story in the brick Bible New Testament is really quite adorable and quite cute. So we're starting out with the Bible and the brick Bible for um, the Christmas story in the New Testament, all using Legos because we love Legos. Our second one, if you remember a few weeks ago, right, a few weeks ago, I shared the worst Thanksgiving book in the whole entire world. Well, guess what? It's the worst Christmas book in the whole entire world. And if you loved the reading of that one, you're going to love this book just as much. There's actually a whole series. Oh, I almost forgot the book. There's actually a whole series of the worst books in the whole entire world. And they're all hilarious. They're all hilarious. And this one... Let me just read you one page. Jingle shoes, jingle feet, jingle all your toes. Stinky, smelly, dirty feet, don't put them in your nose. That's it. I mean, that's all I have to share with you to understand how cute and how fun that book is. Okay, so continuing with the slightly amusing theme. Okay, we have, I love this one. This is called, Hey God, I'm sorry to be stubborn, but I just don't like anyone riding on my back. This is the donkey tells his side of the story. And this is another fantastic take on the Christmas story. Um, told They also have a series. We have several of them. Um, we have the, Hey God, can you stop the rain so I can get off the stinky smelly ark, which is fabulous. But this is a great, funny, engaging Christmas book and that the art is just beautiful in this look at that and it's hilarious so this is a new one that we just got this year that I'm really we're reading we're reading one page every day it's called Christmas around the world 
by Mary D. Lankford. And it, it goes through um, probably a dozen different places. There's Ethiopia, Great Britain, Greece, and talks about how they celebrate Christmas in that country. It, it's a lot of reading. It's a good read aloud, especially if you have younger children. And like I said, we're reading one place, one country each day, and then finding that country on the globe, and then talking about that country. And it's really um, quite great. So what else do I have? Oh, if you follow me on Instagram, you might have seen this before. Santa Bruce. Now this is another one in a series. Um, what it is, is this grumpy bear named Bruce ends up as the father to all of these other little creatures. And he just, all he wants to do, the poor guy, all he wants to do is hibernate. All he wants to do is go to bed and sleep until spring. But his, all his little kids and his new family members keep mistaking him for Santa Claus and he gets roped into being or playing the role of Santa Claus for all the woodland creatures. And it's hilarious because he is grumpy through the whole thing, but secretly loves it. Sort of reminds me of my dad because my dad tends to be gruff and grumpy, but you know he loves it. You know he loves it. So next is um, a classic or a recent classic. It's not a classic for from when I was a child, but it's a classic for my older children, The Polar Express. And we read The Polar Express every year. We've had this book for several years now, and it's, you know, it's The Polar Express story. If you've seen the movie, it's pretty much like that. Um, better than the movie, I think, because I normally think the books are better. Um, let's see, I'm gonna save that one to the end. Okay, another great series of books especially if you have um, kids and, and boys, there was an old lady who swallowed some snow. There was an old lady who swallowed some snow. And this goes along with the whole There Was an Old Lady series where this poor woman is just swallowing so many things that are just not edible. And it's funny because I can't, I can't read these books without at some point, two or three points through the book, turning to the smallest boy and going, but remember, we don't actually swallow that. Even though it's completely, you know, she's swallowing her scarf and she swallowed a bunch of snow and um, a whole bunch of other stuff. And wait till you see what happens to her at the end of this book. It's fantastic. Okay. This one's not necessarily a... The next one's not necessarily a Christmas book, but it's a winter tale from, I believe it's, um, is it Sweden? We got this in our, one of our Atlas crates. So we get the Kiwi crates and the Atlas crates with the boys and you can pay a little bit extra and they will send you a curated book that in, with the Atlas crates that goes along with, um, with whatever you're doing that month. And I don't remember exactly what we were doing that month um, but they sent us this great book called The Tompton. The Tompton. And I believe I've read this book on my YouTube channel. I'll try to, I'll try to remember what it is. Um, if you go to my YouTube channel, you can find the reading of The Tompton. I believe it came out last month, possibly the month before. And it's a fantastic book about a little, little creature that goes and tucks each animal in on this little farm. Fabulous. Okay. What's left? Let me see. Oh, let's do this. This is a great one. This is also a series. Um, the age my children are, we get a lot of series because once they love one, um, they love them all. And so there's several books that we have, three, four, five books of the same type. And this is another one. This is called Merry Christmas Stinky Face. Merry Christmas Stinky Face. And the, the one we initially had for this book was I Love You Stinky Face. And Daniel loved it so much that we ended up getting the, the Halloween one and the Christmas one. And what it is, it's this, this kid who is asking a whole bunch of, what would happen if this happened? Or what would happen, like, for example, what if the snow kept falling and falling so much that we couldn't open the door? Or, <clears throat> oh, here's, 
What if a giant Christmas saurus saw us and came to help? And as he's asking his questions, his mother is just answering them. And it really speaks to how I try to interact with my children that they can ask me whatever they want to ask me and I'm going to answer it. That the fact that they asked meant it deserves an answer of some sort. And a lot of times, especially with the smallest boy, and really with my daughter when she was that age too, the questions would be just out of, out of thin air, out of the blue. But they still deserved an answer. Merry Christmas, Stinky Face. I love this. This is one of our favorite holiday books. Um, another new one that we just got this year is December Holidays from Around the World. So this is another new one as we're kind of studying um, how people celebrate in December around the world in our homeschool this year, um, right now. And I love this, that it goes through Christmas and Hanukkah and Kwanzaa and Boxing Day and Boxing Day. If you're for unfamiliar with Boxing Day, that's a great, that's a great holiday and a great story. St. Nicholas Day, which I remember, I remember celebrating when I was a child. Um, in Europe, we would celebrate St. Nicholas Day every year. So it talks about all of the other holidays that you can celebrate in December, which are equally valid and equally wonderful. And so this is called December Holidays from Around the World. And it uses a mixture of art and photographs and just makes, I mean, the artistic value and the illustrations in this book are absolutely beautiful. All right, almost to the end. Are you still with me? Okay, let's see. So, Daniel is in the Nutcracker Ballet with the Florida Ballet this year. So, of course, we had to pull out the Nutcracker, a story of Christmas magic. Um, this is one that we've had for several years. We got it at the same time as we got Yes, Virginia, There is a Santa Claus. And we really can't, you know, there are a couple of Christmas stories that are iconic. They're, they're iconic for Christmas. And we can't let a Christmas go by without reading them. It'd be like not watching The Christmas Story or not watching Miracle on 34th Street or some version of um, Scrooge, of the, of the Scrooge story. And these two, Yes, Virginia, There is a Santa Claus and The Nutcracker, um, A Story of Christmas Magic, always make it onto our reading list in December. We read a lot. We read a lot of Christmas stories in December because we love it. I mean, it's a perfect time to share children's books. And even my older children, who are now 17 and 20, right, still love to sit and listen to a Christmas story because those stories never go out of style. The magic of the holidays, it captures, it captures that child that all of us still are at some point. And Christmas stories help us connect with that and connect with our children through that, right? So we're almost done, just a couple more. We have The Mouse Before Christmas. The Mouse Before Christmas is an adorable, you know, there are so many great mouse books. One of these days I should do a book roundup. This just got me thinking how many fantastic books I have that feature or star mice in some way. There are so many fantastic mouse books. And this, this is no different. This is called The Mouse Before Christmas. And it's about a little mouse who really wanted to celebrate Christmas and ends up going hitching a ride in Santa's bag and what happens to him. It, it's a beautiful, beautiful book. So, we'll do this one first. This is called, That's Good, That's Bad on Santa's Journey. If you have children that are at the stage where they're starting to recognize things, this is a great book for that. Because it, it we do it, um, what's it called? It, it's companion reading where we take turns, especially when Daniel was younger, because something would happen and then it would say, oh, that's good. No, that's bad. And it invites him to 
and it's almost every page, it invites him to respond. It's a read response where I would read this part and I would say, oh, that's good. And he would respond, no, that's bad. And it's just, it's a hilarious, it's a hilarious story about the mishaps that Santa goes through trying to deliver presents. But I love that response part of it, where as I'm reading the story, you know, as Santa leaned over to put the presents under the tree, the seat of his pants split from top to bottom. Rip. Oh, that's bad. No, that's good. So you're going to want to find out what happens. That's good and that's bad on Santa's journey. All right. We just have two left. Two, two left. And... These are two of my very favorites. My very, very favorites this season. You ready? This one isn't a Christmas story at all. It's actually a Kwanzaa story. It's called The Seven Spools of Thread. It's a Kwanzaa story by Angela Shelf Madeiras, I think. And I love this for several reasons. One, it's the, it's a, it's a story. It's a, um, the word escapes me. Not a myth. Well, what is God's story? It's a story from an from an African village. So it's an old African tale that's been passed down. And it says an African village, in an African village, live seven brothers who make family life miserable with their constant fighting. When their father dies, he leaves an unusual will. By sundown, the brothers must make gold out of seven spools of thread. If they fail, they will be turned out as beggars. Using the Naguzo Saba, or the Seven Principles of Kwanzaa, this author created an unforgettable story. So, it's called the Seven Spools of Thread, and it talks about how we can come together. How we can come together and um, celebrate that which makes us special. How we all can contribute something different, right? to create something beautiful and create riches. Seven Spools of Thread is for Kwanzaa. And I, I invite you, I invite you to get this. Even regardless, regardless of if you celebrate Kwanzaa or Hanukkah or St. Nicholas Day or any of those holidays, learning about the cultures of the people around us makes us better members of humanity and society. It helps us to understand our neighbors, right? All right, my favorite. I got this last year, and it's it's Daniel's favorite too. It's um, and we've read it not just at Christmas time, but we've read it several times in between over the year, over this last year, because it's got his name on it, and it's this series of books you can get for different people. And it's all the same. It's the night before, towards the night before Christmas, but you can get it with your child's name in the book. And it's so cute and so, um, so well put in there because it's the actual Christmas story, towards the night before Christmas that I remember, only they just inserted their name, you know, um, towards the night before Christmas when all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. Daniel's stocking was held, hung by the chimney with care, right? Or when what to Daniel's wondering eyes should appear but a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer. Christmas is global, it's societal, but it's also personal. And I love these little personalized books because they bring it to a personal level and say, you know what, you're part of the Christmas story of the Christmas story. And that's the last book I'm going to share because it brings us full circle back to the Bible because we're all part of the Christmas story. We're all part of the holiday spirit. You know, December is a time to celebrate and to remember the magic, the magic that's in the holidays for all of us. And it's a fantastic time to read to read and share that magic. Read to your children. No matter if they're five months, five years, 15, or 25. 
read to your children because there's value in it. And um, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this holiday book roundup. If you'd like me to do another roundup um, of a different type of book, you know, send me a message or leave a comment. And as always, like and share this video and um, subscribe and notifications, all of those things that um, we want you to do so that we can stay connected. And until next time, I'll see you later.